Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, of course we're gonna take a look at the Shrine deck, updated with all the new shrines from M21. So taking a look at the deck, one of the centerpieces is Sanctum of All, the 5 mana legendary enchantment shrine, saying at the beginning of our upkeep we may search our library and our graveyard for a shrine card and put it onto the battlefield, and then if an ability of another shrine we control triggers while we control 6 or more shrines, that ability triggers an additional time. So in addition to the shrines from M21, of course we're also playing all the Hondans, which also have the shrine subtype, so all of these are legendary enchantments shrines, which will contribute towards Sanctum of All, and all of our shrines get better the more of them we have in play. So we've got all 10 shrines plus Sanctum of All as the 5 color shrine, and some of the shrines we're playing more than one copy of, like the Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest, Sanctum of Calm Waters, and of course Sanctum of All, which is a card we want to get in play as soon as possible. And our deck is very capable of playing Sanctum of All on turn 3, thanks to all the acceleration we have from Gilded Goose, Lanar Elves, and... Paradise Druids, and we also have Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest, which can help generate additional mana. So let's take a look at the entire deck, starting out with the mana accelerants. So we've got the full playset of Gilded Goose, not as good as Lanarals, typically speaking, but it does also fix our colors, and we are a five color deck, so every now and then that will come in handy. And then we've got the full playset of Lanar Elves, which is a preferred one drop, as it allows us to play a turn two Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest, and then still produce mana on the following turn to cast Sanctum of All. And then a Paradise Druid, another mana fixer that uh, will help us ramp towards Sanctum of All. So there's a lot of permutations that let us play Sanctum on turn 3. We can go turn 1 Goose, turn 2 Paradise Druid, turn 3 Sanctum, turn 1 Elf, turn 2 Paradise Druid, turn 3 Sanctum, turn 1 Elf, turn 2 Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest, turn 3 Sanctum of All. So all those permutations will work just fine. The only permutation that doesn't work is multiple Lanar Elves, since they only produce green mana, so they won't necessarily let us cast the 5 color enchantment. And then we have some cheap interaction too with the Blink of an Eye, which does still let us play Gigantha as our companion, as it is still only a single blue card even if we kick it. And the reason we want Blink of an Eye in this deck is that our deck is very good at generating a lot of card advantage, drawing a ton of cards, generating a lot of mana, but it does sometimes need a bit of interaction for the board, especially for opposing enchantments and uh, things we can't interact with easily. Creatures and Planeswalkers we can usually deal with, but things like artifacts and enchantments we definitely want to have an answer to, and Blink of an Eye gives us a cheap way to bounce them. If we have the mana to pay the kicker cost, we can and draw an additional card, but sometimes we're fine just bouncing it for a turn, which buys us enough time to then generate an advantage with Sanctum of All and pull far enough ahead where we can still win the game. So Blink of an Eye just gives us a nice, cheap, versatile answer that uh, can handle different situations. Now let's take a quick look at all the shrines in the deck. We've got Sanctum of Tranquil Light, Single White, and then for 5 and White we can tap target creature and it costs one generic mana less to activate for each shrine we control. We're not going to be using this all that often, so it's mostly just a cheap shrine to get in play to make our other shrines better. Then Sanctum of Stone Fangs, on the other hand, is pretty important and will often help us end the game as a one and a black enchantment, saying at the beginning of our pre-combat main phase, each opponent loses X life and we gain X life, where X is the number of shrines we control. So this will help us gain a bunch of life and also drain the opponent to death and eventually win the game. And especially once we start doubling the triggers with Sanctum of All, this will end the game very quickly. Another important thing to note about Sanctum of All is that it searches up the shrine at the beginning of our upkeep, but a lot of the M21 shrines trigger at the beginning of our pre-combat main phase, which means if we search them up with Sanctum of All, they will still trigger in that same turn cycle, making those M21 shrines a lot more desirable to search up with Sanctum of All compared to the Hondans from uh, Kamigawa. So that's just something to keep in mind. So often getting Sanctum of Stone Fangs is going to be much better than searching up a Hondan of Infinite Rage, which is our next one, dealing damage to any target equal to the number of shrines we control, but it triggers at the beginning of our upkeep. So if we search it up with Sanctum of All, it's not going to trigger until the next turn. 
Then we've got Sanctum of Shattered Heights, which is quite powerful at dealing with creatures and planeswalkers. For one mana we can discard a land card or a shrine card, and then the Sanctum of Shattered Heights deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker, where X is the number of shrines we control. Especially once we start drawing a lot of cards with the blue shrines, we can use all of those extra cards and turn them into damage with Sanctum of Shattered Heights, and a great way to deal with multiple planeswalkers. Then Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest, we are playing for copies, just because it's so important to generate an early mana advantage. So this creates X mana of any one color at the beginning of our pre-command main phase, where X is the number of shrines we control. So by itself it makes one mana, but of course scales nicely the more shrines we have in play. And also is a nice one to get with our Sanctum of All, if we have a lot of expensive cards in hand that we just want to get in play, as we'll be able to generate mana right away. Then as for mana, we've got a single Honden of Cleansing Fire, typically not one of the shrines we're going to prioritize, but if we're playing against a burn deck, this can gain a ton of life. And then we also have the full playset of Sanctum of Calm Waters. At the beginning of our pre-combat main phase, it draws X cards, where X is the number of shrines we control, and if we do discard a card, we can often discard a random mana creature. It is more important to keep shrines and lands in hands because of our Sanctum of Shattered Heights, so we're often better off discarding some of our mana creatures that we no longer need. And then uh, Sanctum of Calm Waters is basically another payoff card besides our Sanctum of All, and will eventually draw into our Sanctum of All as well. So it's important to have either one of these in our opening hand, or maybe a Honden of Seeing Winds, just a way to pull ahead on cards. And then we have a single copy of Honden of Knight's Reach, which makes the opponent discard cards at the beginning of our upkeep, equal to the number of shrines we control, can be very useful against some combo and control decks. And then at 5 mana we've got a single Honden of Seeing Winds, which at the beginning of our upkeep draws a card for each shrine we control. Now unlike Sanctum of Calm Waters, this is not a May ability, so we do have to be careful that we don't end up drawing our entire deck, especially if we have Sanctum of All doubling the triggers from all our shrines. So this is a bit of a dangerous card to play sometimes, but usually we can still end the game in time thanks to our Sanctum of Stone Fangs and our Infinite Rage. And then we also have a single Honden of Life's Web, which at the beginning of our upkeep creates a 1-1 colorless spirit creature token for each shrine we control. Also not a win condition we're often going to rely on, since we're better off just winning the game with our damage and drain effects. But every now and then this can also help us win the game, making an army of spirit tokens. And then the most important card in the deck, Sanctum of All, which we want to get in play as soon as possible. And then with the second clause doubling the triggers from all our Sanctums, we'll often end the game in a turn or two. And then taking a look at our mana base, we do need quite a few untapped green sources to help with all these early accelerants. So we've got four breeding pool, two temple gardens, two stomping grounds and two overgrown tombs alongside a single forest for a total of 11 untapped green sources on turn one. And then we still have a healthy amount of different colors to help us with the five color mana base, including four fabled passages alongside one of each basic land. And then we've got at least one of each dual land to round out the mana base. And then we also get to free roll Gigantha the Wellspring in the companion slot, and our deck can generate a lot of mana with all these mana creatures and Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest. So every now and then we might end up uh, putting Gigantha in our hand and casting a 5 mana 5 5. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. This hand is missing a payoff Sanctum, but we do have a very good start with uh, a lot of mana production and then blink. We can always cycle and draw an additional card with. So we're hoping to draw Sanctum of All or the Calm Waters to pull ahead on cards. Could have actually been correct to play Stomping Ground since both Forest and Elves make green mana, which means uh, it's not too helpful with casting Sanctum of All. Opponent also ramping. Field of the Dead, that's fine. Field is typically a fine matchup. The only card we struggle against is Ugin the Spirit Dragon. And we did find Sanctum of Calm Waters, so that's good. So I can play that plus uh, Stamp Tomping Grounds. Now Golos. Probably not going to fetch another field since they already have one. So the way to potentially beat Ugin is by making them discard it with the Black Honden. Of 
opponent gets a Catria Trium. And we did draw Sanctum of All, so that's great. And don't need Paradise Druid anymore. And we'll make some white mana. So next turn I'm gonna get uh, Black Honden, I think. Although it might be too late since with an extra land they can cast an Ugin next turn. Golos. All right. We can deal with an army of zombies pretty easily. Can gain a bunch of life with a white Honden or the green Honden can make an army of spirit tokens. So do I still care about getting the black Honden at this point? Probably not. If they have Ugin they can cast it. So it's not gonna really help. So instead I think I'm getting the green Honden then. Or I can get uh, Shattered Heights and kill Golos, which is also tempting since they could activate Golos otherwise. Alright, let's kill Golos. And typically you want to draw with Calm Waters before making mana with uh, the green Sanctum so you have a better idea what uh, mana you need. Discard a mana creature and then... A red mana seems fine. Can put Giganta in hands. Rejuvenator, that's fine. And always want to make sure to search up with Sanctum of All before your Hondon's trigger, so you've got an additional shrine in play. Don't think it matters what we get, since they should be dead to my Infinite Rage and Stone Fangs triggers. Seven more from each Sanctum of Stone Fangs trigger. So yeah, we dealt 28 damage in one turn, just from our two uh, damage dealing Sanctums. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, we've got a nice opening hand. Potentially able to cast a turn 3 Sanctum of All. Now I'm not going to play the Basic Forest, because Basic Forest and Elves both make single green, which uh, doesn't contribute towards Sanctum of All, so any other lands will do. But next turn I can just play uh, Shockland Tapped. And hopefully cast the turn 3 Sanctum of All. Facing a blue-green... Maybe... A Ram Field of the Dead deck. Probably gonna start by getting the blue Sanctum. Or I can get the Black Honden 
to start making them discard. I guess I can buy that. Sure. Because then I'll also generate a ton of mana from the green shrine here. So I can spend all that extra mana on uh, the cards we draw with the blue shrine. Alright, we had a pretty ideal start. Opponent on a gate version with Guild Summit, maybe playing Mesa's End as well. So the main reason I want to get the discard is to potentially prevent him from hard casting a scary top end card like Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Make sure to Sanctum of All first to get an extra Honden or Sanctum. And then uh, we're gonna get Calm Waters. Opponent has to discard their entire hand, which included Ulamog. And our opponent understandably scoops him up. Sweet, onto the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Hands okay, we don't have any mana accelerant on turn one or two, but we do have Fruitful Harvest to maybe set up a turn four Sanctum of All. So I'll try it. It's a lot of Fruitful Harvests. Omen of the Sea. Could be an Omniscient Flood of Tears deck. A Risen Reef does point towards that as well. So I should be able to play my Sanctum of All next turn, making red mana. Time your pluses on Fae of Wishes. Root Snare we don't care about too much at least. And then I probably want to get the uh, Red Sanctum to deal damage to creatures and planeswalkers to try and take out Tamiya. Or I can get the blue Shrine to draw a bunch of cards. I think I need to get the Rat Shrine instead here, take out Risen Reef Druid and try and take out Tamiyo. Otherwise we're just dead to a Flood of Tears. So Shattered Heights. And then mana doesn't really matter here. So I could play Cleansing Fire first. And then still activate three times, dealing four damage each. So I think I kill Risen Reef and Tamiyo. And the next turn I can get the uh, blue shrine. So they have three non-land permanents in play at the moment. Now four. So next turn they could technically Flood of Tears, but I'm probably gonna kill the Leaf Kindred. Alright, so they will be able to Flood of Tears, and that will bounce all my stuff back. If I had more time, I could have gotten the Black Honden to make them discard, but that's going to be too slow here. So... 
search library and uh thing just gets calm waters try and draw some lands so i can rebuild after the flood of tears although if they have omniscience we're just dead and discard the goose So, gotta cross our fingers and hope they don't have Flood of Tears. And there's Flood of Tears, and now we gotta hope they don't have Omniscience. They have Omniscience. Alright, GG's. They can just fail wishes for the win condition out of the sideboard. A rallying roar, so they're gonna win the game with the uh, Sylvan Awakening. Yep. Plus rallying roar. Turn lands into two twos and then unsamp them with a roar, giving them plus one plus one. GG's. I guess we're still at one. It's a little awkward. <laughs> One card I could consider playing in the deck as well to help against combo is a uh, few copies of the uh, Madling Mage, which could help against combo decks like this and like the Treasure Hunt deck, and would also help against Ugin the Spirit Dragon wiping our board. But it's a little awkward to include in the deck for sure. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand has good acceleration, but it's missing a payoff. Calm Waters or Sanctum of All is what we're looking for. Typically, I'm okay keeping hands with great mana, even if they don't have a payoff, especially on the draw. I'll try it. Not a Field of the Dead deck, and we did draw the Calm Waters, so that's good. Another Gracer, opponent's gonna be left with one card in hand. A Yarok, two double triggers, so that's gonna double feel of the dead as well. Won't be able to kill Yarok with uh, Shattered Heights yet. So just gonna play Calm Waters. And then next turn I might be able to kill Yarok. We've got one of each basic land, so Field of Ruin shouldn't mess us up too badly. I'll get an island, I guess. Probably want to play the Sanctum of All at this point. Or I can kill Yarok. Letting them keep Yarok for one turn is probably not a disaster. So let's see, Black Man, I guess, is what I need. Or I can fetch the Swamp with Fabled Passage, and then 
I need to make red or green. And the next turn we'll take care of Yarok. Alright, they do get double Cavalier of Thorns triggers now. So that's pretty strong, and uh, they'll be able to escape Ura more easily. And a Risen Reef, so that was an ideal sequence for our opponents. So I'll take three. And then, what do I want to search up? Getting the discard is probably not super useful, with my opponent being almost empty-handed. So I might just get Life's Web here. Or I can start getting the win conditions. Maybe get Infinite Rage now and next turn Stone Fangs. And discard probably an elf. So I've got five shrines in play. They can keep Cavalier of Thorns. Another Yarok. Into an escaped Uro. It's a lot of zombies. Get Stone Fangs. And discard some random stuff. Play this and then uh, kill some creatures. Can play Gigantha. Can keep a blink of an eye too. Can kill some more zombies. Gonna have to discard to hand size anyway. Alright, this seems fine. And next turn they should be dead if they don't have an Ugin. This 
cycles Triome. And Remorse doesn't matter. And there we go, double infinite rage and stone fangs triggers will kill them. On to the next one. We're on the draw. Not a great hand, I do have turn one goose. And then I may be playing a turn three Honda of Knight's Reach, but then I'm pretty far from the seeing winds. That's Mulligan. This is better, except we don't have green mana. Do have a lot of green lands we could draw. So I think we keep and then hope to find green mana at some point. Goose is probably going to be too slow. Although if I draw green right away, I could play turn one goose, turn two sanctum. But I guess I might as well just turn three sanctum, turn four sanctum of all here. And then turn two I can maybe blink. Turn one commune with dinosaurs, so dinosaur tribal. I will blink that. Just gotta try and slow him down until we find some green mana. Huntmaster into Marauding Raptor. Alright, next turn is probably my last chance to find green and still be in the game. Well, we might just be dead. Even if we do. Gonna take 13 here. One damage doesn't matter. Not a blink doesn't do it here. Alright, GG's. We're on the draw with a good opening hand. Some accelerants into Sanctum of All on turn 3, hopefully. Facing Simic Guildgate. We keep getting matched against these Ram Field of the Dead type decks. Playing Goose can still be somewhat useful if they have a spot removal spell for one of our copies of Gilded Goose, so the other one can still produce mana. But against Gates of Blaze, that's not gonna help. Alright, that sets us back quite a bit. So we do get to play Sanctum of All. Doesn't matter too much what we fetch. Suppose I can get an island so I have double blue for blink later.
and then hopefully we can make them discard an Ugin that they have stuck in hand before they can cast it. There's Field of the Dead. Alright, if their last card is an Ugin, we probably lose. If not, we'll be fine. So get uh, Calm Waters, I think. Guild Summit, that's fine. Alright, so next turn we can make them discard most of their hands. Roots, sure. An army of zombies is manageable. So probably get Stone Fangs here, gain some life right away. And what do I discard? Another Calm Waters. And then I can still blink a zombie too here. And next turn they're dead to the stone fangs and the infinite rage. They don't have the mana to activate goal loss, but they can get a gate to draw an additional card. I suppose I should have considered blinking the guild summit, but they still had multiple gates untapped. But maybe that was worth it here, blinking the guild summit in response to Golos, so they don't draw an extra card. So I'm taking 14. And that should do it. Alright, sweet. So we've definitely proven that the Field of the Dead matchups are pretty good for the deck. Again, just gotta dodge Ugin Spirit Dragon, which does usually prompt a concession from our part. So I'm a little disappointed that we didn't get a wider variety of matchups. I even recorded some additional games against Field of the Dead that we won that I didn't show you. So yeah, the matchmaker sadly not cooperating today. But uh, I've had some decent success against non-Field of the Dead decks too. The main archetype we struggle against are hyper-aggressive decks that can go underneath us before we manage to assemble all our different sanctums, so a deck like Monoret, and then decks that can potentially go over the top combo decks like we saw the Flood of Tears combo deck and Treasure Hunt can actually be surprisingly annoying too. So to improve those matchups we could potentially try and fit in some uh, maybe discard spells in the main deck. I tried to play around with Duress in the main deck but uh, wasn't super impressed by it. Maybe Meddling Mage can be another potential solution, could help us shut down Ugin the Spirit Dragon too. So it does have some applications there. But uh, yeah, definitely a fun 5-color deck with plenty of room for exploration and customization. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.